Jesus. My name is the bond servant of Christ, John. Saint of God to pioneer the gospel of sonship, incorruption, a custodian of the dimension of encounters, the reigns of glory, the reigns of teleportation, the reigns of ascension into the diverse cities of God's glory. So the Bible says, when you wait upon the Lord, you shall renew your strength. And then the moment you renew strength, the Bible says, you shall run, not walk. Now the word run is that you will receive capacity to break through the gravitational pull of this natural veil. Something is holding you from breaking through into the dimensions of the spirit. So by waiting upon the Lord, you gain capacity to run supernaturally. The question would be, what does it mean to run? There is a race to run. Because when you run, you win the prize. When you run, you get the prize. What's the prize? The prize was the door that was closed against the five foolish virgins. The prize was the door of the glory of God that was shut and closed against the first prophets, the first teachers, and the first miracle walkers who say the Father, Lord, Lord, open for me. Lord, Lord, I did miracles in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I did wondrous works in your name. And God will say, depart from me, you walkers of iniquities. You saw that Jesus responded to them. You saw that this man could hear the voice of God. You didn't hear me now. So it, it wasn't about talking with Jesus. Something much more than talking with Jesus. Something much more than hearing the voice of Jesus. Was an access to somewhere that was denied. Say he that wants to run must run the race to win the prize. In other words, when you begin the race, you run into something. The prize is the qualification to assess and enter the reigns of God's glory. It is called the habitation of God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall run the race to obtain the prize. So that means salvation and born again experience did not give you the prize when they lied to you that grace gave it all to you they have deceived us first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 to 27 know you not that they quit wrong in a race run all not some part of it but one receives the prize so run that you may obtain the prize the prize jesus paid the prize but the prize has not been given the prize is not given free but qualification for the prize chasing was given free it is called salvation saved by grace to run the race to obtain the prize of glory did you get that saved by grace to run the race to obtain the prize of glory empowered by the Holy Ghost to obtain the prize of glory and it says now by the time you're on and you have obtained the prize what's gonna happen you will ascend because by the time you ascend you have broken out of gravitational pool of flesh in that dimension of the brokenness of spirit through running the race and waiting upon the Lord you don't have to run anymore you know why 
because in that dimension, one walk equals to the, the fastest speed in the world. Because in that dimension, you don't have to fight to speed up. In that dimension, you travel with the speed of the Spirit. And immediately the Lord said to John, come up in a camp. He said, in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, I was in the third heavens. So there was nothing to walk for, nothing to run for. Every dimension is interlinked. And immediately you found yourself into dimensions of the spirit where there is no distance to those dimensions. And he says now, nah, and thou shall walk and not faint. You shall walk and not faint. It, it begins with running, breaking through, breaking records in the realms, crushing the flesh, consecrating yourself in the things of God until you break out of this veil, until you break out of this gravitational pool of seductions of the devil. But this is where not a five percent of people fail. It is not easy to break out of this gravity. Do you know that other planets don't need you to use a car to travel? Yes, sir. Once you're in other planet, you float. But to get to other planet, there's a required speed you are going to speed so up to a point where you have to break through gravitational pull in order to ascend into other dimensions that you call planets. But by the time they get there, the stress of gravitational pull is over. And that's how it is in the spirit. We are going to run with the speed of prayer speed of consecration speed of revelation speed of holiness speed of, of attending services speed of walking in the spirit mortifying the deeds of the flesh hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah by the time we break through these patterns of darkness the limitations of the clouds of darkness we are caught up in the realms of god in that place we step into tranquility of peace and access into dimensions of God. We are one step equals to one billion run. Will you be able to take this limp of faith? To believe what you have not seen? To call on him that you have never heard until you see him? Until you hear him? Can you stay in faith until faith is over? Because the moment you stay in faith, trust him, and then he shows up, that's the end of faith. Can you stay in hope? Oh, can you stay in hope? Can you stay in hope? Walking in the trust and, pr and trust in the Lord in faith until the realities of the Spirit are given unto you. Can you? Can you possess the Spirit? Can you possess the Spirit of faith by your consistency in the instructions of God? The Lord said, "Tell my people to wait. Will you wait until Jesus appears in your room?" Will you wait until he will come? Listen, Jesus says, I will come. I will manifest myself. Jesus promised. He said it. Not Paul, not your preacher, not a liar. He is God. He says, if any man will keep my commandments continuously, diligently, I, the Lord, will manifest myself. You know what that means? The same way he manifested himself to Peter. When he ascended, he came, hallelujah. While Peter was fishing, he appeared there. And he, Peter saw him. 
and touched him, ate with him, exchanged the, uh, communion with him. The same Jesus can appear to you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, if you love me, if you love me, you will keep my word. So go and do that transaction. Wait on the Lord. Keep keeping his word. Keep loving him. Keep praying. Are you hearing me? No matter how tough it is, stay there. It is called the secret place. The secret place is a dry place. The secret place is your wilderness. The secret place is a place of consecration, a place of purging, a place of prayer, a place of staying, a place of renewal of the mind until you emerge a transformed man. In that dimension of transformation, Jesus will appear appear to you and once that happens you'll be amazed that he will appear again and again and again and again and again and then after a certain period of subsequent appearances he will then say come I will show you instead of me coming you will come up to me and let me show you things that you've never seen things that you have never heard I will, because God promised to show us not to tell us the promise is not to tell us because anything you hear will go through your reasoning and once it goes through the gate of reasoning and thoughts reason and thoughts will dilute it visuals of sight will infiltrate it so god wants to capture art in the dimension of visions because that which you have seen becomes part of your stronghold we increase in spiritual ranks when we capture certain depths in the reins of your sin when we elevate into that encounter something is captured in the reins nobody enters the frequencies the electricity of zion and be the same your increase in the spirit decreases your carnality to get this message from the bond servant of christ john anosika kindly visit our website www.pastorjohndigitalmedia.com 